Hey, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I'm Jody Collier. This is my friend Andrew Carden. Tell us what we're doing today, Andrew. So today we're going to be stepping up our game a little bit. And even though we're using plate in the modified 1G position, we're going to be using 532, 6010, 5P plus for our root pass, and then 316s for our hot filling cap. All right, let's, let's do it. it. The fit up on this joint will be 1 16th gap with 1 16th land, 30 degree bevel, once again a 532, 6010 root. What you see here is a 1 8 electrode and it's, it's easy to jam it in there down close to the root. But the challenge with a 532 electrode is that it recesses the tip of the electrode back farther away and so it's possible to get internal undercuts. So you really have to pay attention to really putting some pressure and keeping that rod jammed in there. We're going to be using 125, 126 amps for the root pass here. Ready Andrew? Let's go. All right, we're ready to light off that tack there. I'm going to let Andrew explain what's going on here. So you see, as soon as I light up off the tack, I'm letting the rod warm up a little bit and then boom, right into the joint burning into or burning out of the tack that I was already in. Now, a couple things to really notice here. On the flat portion of the pipe, or in this case plate, you're going to really have to watch your rod angle. Now, rod angle is always important, but especially at the top where you're running a little bit hotter than you normally would for just the, the top portion of the pipe, you might have to flick the rod back into the, into the puddle a little bit to close up that keyhole, as you're seeing here. It's better having the arc shots when Jody was, I uh, was coaching Jody, but you see him correcting that rod angle as he's progressing down the pipe. Another thing is too, is really make sure that that rod is jammed all the way inside. If you get that internal undercut, more than likely, you'll be able to pass an x-ray, but when it comes to the bend test, it's gonna break every time right on that. So this 45, sort of flat, sort of 45 uh, area is one of the easier positions, but we're gonna get into overhead shortly. This is the root ground, ready for the hot pass. So before we get into the hot pass, just wanna thank Andrew's company, Nuco, a century company, one more time for letting him come down and work with me. So the hot pass is going to be 3 16 rod. 145 to 150 amps. We're using an ESOB 285 Rebel. I think the arc force is on 50% here, also known as DIG. I'm gonna let Andrew kind of walk you through what he sees and what he feels here as he's running the hot pass. So again, notice rod angle, but you'll notice I'm moving a lot quicker and I'm really with that high amperage. And if we get a shot of the machine, the lower range of voltage that I'm running is between 25 and 27 volts. I'm just moving a quick, tight uh, whipping motion and just moving my way along the plate. You don't want to hang around too long and you want to keep that arc jammed in there nice and tight so you don't raise your voltage and potentially blow through the pipe. You also don't want to grind too much when you grind that root out. If you take too much metal out and you're too thin and you come back over with a 3 16 rod, you could blow all the way through. All right, now it's for the first fill pass. Same everything, same rod. Uh, same amperage. You can see the uh, lot of spatter on the lens here. This is a good a good time to talk about keep your lenses clean and you'll be able to see better. Keep a, keep a stack of clear lenses in your box and don't be afraid to put a new one in. You got anything else to add here, Andrew? So just looking at this arc shot right here, I know what's coming up next. I'm trying to keep the fill pass nice and even all the way around, but especially on this angle of the plate, it's simulating going down the side of a pipe. It's not always going to be all even. So when you see the, the fill pass here, there's going to be a little bit of a valley at that bottom of the plate. We're going to have to run a subsequent pass on that low area. Very common. Normally it's just a, a pass that you strip along the side, bumped it up just a little bit. So we weren't really stacking a lot of iron in there. We were just just filling in that low spot to get it all the same height. And you'll see I'm using the same type of technique, just swirling it around, making sure I'm still leaving some of that beveled edge so I have a nice uh, straight path all the way down the side of my plate. Okay, so now this thing is just about ready to cap. Slightly uneven from the, that little stripper pass, but it's gonna come out okay. It's going to be a lot easier to, to fill and cap and have it even if, if you didn't run that stripper run there. So let's explain what's going on right here. This is a little bit different technique. So moving up to the 530, from the 532 to the 316, 
you see I'll, I'll add a little bit more arc manipulation, rod manipulation into my puddle. Most of that is due to just the nature of me going counterclockwise or clockwise. The puddle tends to want to build up on one side or another, so I'll end up having to reverse my direction or go into a horseshoe technique type just to get a, that puddle to flatten out. Here's a nice slow-mo of it so you can really get an idea. If you look at where the puddle is just solidifying, you'll see that on the left side of the plate starting to build up. I have to reverse the rotation in order to flatten the puddle out so there's an even deposit on both sides. We're going to let you watch this in slow-mo. I'm running about 140 amps here. Depending on what machine you have, you might be running a little less or maybe even a lot more. I'm trying to trying to achieve a 1 16th or slightly less than a 1 16th reinforcement here because that's the acceptance criteria. Here's a little quick shot of the root pass. The requirement there is 100% full penetration. This is great practice. We're going to be doing the pipe next. Thanks for watching.